All right, and we are now ready for the Resident Evil HD remaster run with Pessimism. Take it away. What's up, everybody? Before I start, I want to thank you guys for your time. Appreciate you watching the run. Much love. That's uh, three, two, one, go. Woo! So we're doing Mr. Christopher. So the difference between Real Survival and New Game 100%, Real survival is automatically set to hard mode. There is no auto aim. There is less pickups. The item boxes are not linked. And slight enemy, different enemy placements. Right. Uh, chat wants to introduce, or uh, Couch wants to introduce themselves. Right. Hi, I'm uh, Carcinogen SDA. Hi, I'm Draven12. Major Jiggling. And we also have Rebecca. <laughs> Off camera on the right, we got Rebecca. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. So we're going to the main hall. We're going to pick up our first little weapon. Let's see. The handgun is only used for uh, a total of two fights throughout the run. So for anyone, this is the HD remaster of the remake. That's the GameCube remake. So you can get a little confusing. Some people think it's this, this, that, but yeah, that's what it is. So the, one thing that's introduced in this game is alternate controls. It's more of like a new control scheme, which allows for very easy 180s and stuff like that, which is used in the run heavily. So one thing that's in this game is called stair skating. You hold up on the D-pad, and you mash run as fast as you can. And that's what I was referring to when I said in the interview, I'm looking forward to the <laughs> gliding, because it looks like they're gliding up the stairs, up and down the stairs. Yeah, don't try that at home, whatever you do. <laughs> don't do it. You're so right here we have it. our first enemy encounter. So in this Resident Evil game, you want to like run towards the zombie. He didn't do it. This guy is a little jerk sometimes. You want to run towards the zombies to bait them, whereas other Resident Evil games, generally, you want to completely stay away from them. That is the awesome thing to do. Run at them, pull back at the correct time, and hopefully you get the bait. But sometimes they don't bait, that's just luck, and it is what it is. Rebecca, how nice of you to join us. So this game has two different characters, Christopher Redfield and Jill Valentine. They each have, they're, they're different in their own way. Chris runs faster, he has more health. He's, he does more damage with a knife, and he recovers faster with a knife. However, he does has little inventory slots, and he does not have the lockpick, which forces him to go and get small keys, <laughs> yeah. which automatically makes his route longer than Jill's route. She also mentioned that uh, Chris also has a uh, slightly bigger collision box and hit box, so it... Uh, it makes squeezing by enemies a little more difficult in some places. So coming out of here. Go, Christopher, go. It's like he's nodding. As oh, he just goes yeah. the what a guy. It's all good. Yeah, so the zombie wasn't, uh, wasn't on camera during the uh, sideways transition. And if he's not on camera, then they're, the only real option is to YOLO that zombie. Yeah. Um, just like kind of tend towards the right side of the hall. Um, on the way in, it is possible to make the zombie that was on the far side of the graveyard sitting next to the shotgun shells not aggro at all, as long as you stay on like the very right side going in to put the arrow. So whenever, so you can hold A and approach the doors and you can open the door the earliest frame possible. That is what you would do on all doors except doors that are locked. You want to like mash so you get the text to go by as fast as possible. Also, each door in this game is about seven seconds. There is a door skip mod that uh, obviously removes the doors and it saves you over 20 minutes through out the run and they're, they're their own categories and stuff like that.
We should also mention uh, defense items. Uh, Pessimism just picked up a dagger, which uh, he's going to save for one of the boss fights later. Yeah, you can set up for manual or automatic, and it's really just preference, but it makes more sense to set it on manual, because in case if you get grabbed by any zombie before, then you automatically use it, then you don't have the dagger. You can actually retrieve daggers from zombies if you decapitate them while they still have a dagger in their head. Just fun to note. Let you know if you have any donations would be a cool time. Sure do. We have a $10 from James M. Please shoot bullets at the zombies. They are bad <laughs> zombies and deserve to not be alive anymore. Bad <laughs> zombies. Thank you for your donation. Cheers. But, uh, I don't know, man. I think we want to be largely pacifistic to most of these zombies. Pacifist? Pacifistic? Pacifist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pacifist. Okay. <laughs> All right. You got it. In a lot of the Resident Evil games, you actually, like, don't shoot most of the enemies. You just run by them. Oh. Thank you, sir. Oh, that was, mm. yeah. The uh, normally, whenever he uh, goes up to the corner like that, the zombie is supposed to lunge through the corner. Um, and he's supposed to kind of pull back and then run around the corner. But as it didn't lunge, the uh, next best thing is to alt control around. Alt control around, and uh, kind of got lucky with that. What I like to do to Percy is I like to mash as often as I can to keep my, thorn, my thumb warmed up since stair skating is so prevalent. You have a zombie right here. Okay, we got a good position right there. I, when I go with Christopher, I like to, uh, like, assume attack, and then it backs him up. So there's a chance that that zombie is going to be right in your face as you get the camera changed, and there's nothing you can do about it. You can do that little trick to... Uh, reduce the chance of getting grabbed if he is in that position. Yeah. Basically, uh, pessimism is switching between the left analog stick and the D-pad a lot, um, because the D-pad on alt controls is still tank controls, uh, whereas alt controls just sort of tilt, moves you around. Um, but if he has the knife equipped, then he can actually press R1 to raise the weapon and uh, get, a little bit of a, get a little bit of a Korean backdash there. So here we have the biggest reset point in the game the dog. So for real survival, you need as much ammunition as possible for one of the boss fights. So in order to do that, you come and you knife this fine dog right here who's a ninja sometimes. Mm. Yeah, the oh dog. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's, uh, he's oh. got the jumps around a lot. And the grabs also uh, eat up a lot of time whenever you, uh, whenever they do connect. Whenever he throws up his head, that's when he's going to grab. You just like dodge another grab there. But uh, by using the knife here, it takes uh, fewer stabs than it does handgun bullets. He also winds up saving handgun bullets for the first boss that he actually has to fight. And on top of that, he also doesn't aggro the other dog that is in the room. Correct. Whereas with Jill, you actually have to shoot it with the handgun. So right there's the first instance of uh, different locations for enemies. Normally, that zombie's right here. In yeah, normal mode, normal. it's like close to the door that you just unlocked. But in hard mode, it's uh, kind of really close to uh, where you would be coming from. Kind of switch it up. Yeah. Keep the surprise. Everything about Resident Evil HD Remaster is designed to subvert the expectations of people who played the original game. If you have a donation, or it's a perfect time. Yes, we do. We have $19.96 from Barry Burton's Day Off. <laughs> <laughs> Take this. It's a donation. It's really powerful, especially for living things. GDQ help. Thank you, Mr. Burton. Very Burton. Into the comforting arms of Barry Burton. <laughs> so now we are approaching the second biggest uh, reset spot in this game. That is Murder Hall. It is called Murder Hall because it is an appropriate name. So you get past the dogs. And then you run into these three kind gentlemen. Thank you, sir. 
Sometimes the bald headed one can just like kind of block the block the way on the way out. Thank you, sir. There you Very go. Very nice. 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 Very good. Yes. Runs have many, many, many runs have been lost to that room. Oh yeah. Absolutely. But generally it comes down to whether whether the uh, the guy with the bald spot on his head is going to cooperate. Mm -hmm. Followed by his uh, followed by his buddy, who may or may not be attentive when he comes around the corner. And then by that time, the crimson will go up to you. That's a good thing we haven't mentioned crimsons. Crimsons are uh, a lot faster zombies that you can see. He ran at me, and uh, they're just scary. Here we have Ripjord. I call him Ripjord because he dies no matter what you do. And we're gonna go get Serum to help him because he has been poisoned. Now, getting the serum is not necessary. He will die, and you will not be able to get your weapon, but it is slower to not get the serum. So we will go get the serum. Right. Later on, uh, by saving Richard, uh, you have a chance of getting an assault shotgun. Um, it comes at, like, different places in the run, depending on if you play Chris or Jill. But if you play Chris and you save Richard, then uh, you get an assault shotgun in the guardhouse. And that is Chris's main weapon. Jill gets uh, a grenade launcher, which is a lot better than the, sh the shotgun. Kind of depends on the difficulty level, really. But which, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like with in, in normal mode, Jill's primary weapon would be the grenade launcher. But in real survival mode, it would be the assault shotgun. But it's for Chris. It's no matter the difficulty, it's always going to be the assault shotgun all the way around. Yep. See if this guy what he wants to do. Thank you, sir. So the zombies, like this game, is different in terms of other Resident Evil games, like health-wise, because you know in Resident Evil One, Two, Three, you can take lots of hits before getting put into caution. Where in this game, two hits and your run's dead most of the time. So sometimes, like the enemies, their damage variates, and. Um, so most of the time, when you get grabbed twice, you're in red caution. In this game and a lot of other games, if you're in caution, uh, you run slower, you turn slower, and it's just not good. So we're getting with the first death mask. Uh, if you have any more donations, it'd be a swell time. Most definitely. We have $100 from Casuality. Proud to <laughs> donate to an important cause during Pessimism's run. Good looks. Good. Shout out to Carcinogen SDA. Yo, good looks. Good, good looks. looks. Good Thank you, Casuality. Looks. Much love, homie. So this is a room that Jill has nothing to do with, but we need to because <laughs> there's a key that we need, and this man is guarding it. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> 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 Sometimes that guy doesn't lunge, and it's not so clean, but it, it, we got it that time. Yeah, because Chris has to uh, use the small keys every so often. That is just the last small key that you actually have to pick up throughout the course of the run, so... A donation would be mighty fine. <laughs> All right. We have $5 from Raw Derps. Hey. Good luck to my home, hey, Pessy, on the Remister run. Shout out to that cool-looking couch and that beautiful-looking crowd. Yo, Brian, much love, dude. Thank you. Cheers. We have nearly gotten Ripshirt his medicine. And he is going... Him and Miss Chambers are gonna bring us right back to where we just came from. How lovely. Wow. Yeah. Just get warped right over to the other side of the mansion. <laughs> that we just came from. So we're gonna, you know, skate back up here. And that guy is right in my face. Goodbye. Fortunately, he was in a uh, lunging AI pattern and not like a, uh, I'm just gonna slowly shamble towards you and you know. Yep. <laughs> you're probably gonna, probably gonna get grab pattern. There's like two different AI patterns for the zombies, but that one was the uh, that one was the good one. It's a little difficult to kind of tell which one you're getting. 
But yeah. uh, generally, generally, it's like if you move, if you if you can if you can identify, if you can identify like the particular pattern, just like based on their uh, their trajectory, like their course towards you, then you can actually change up your movement and get them to possibly lunge. But who am I kidding? The zombies in this game are really random. Oh yeah, they're very mean. More donations, please. All right, we have $16 from P Vigil 2140 Had to give my donation during my Metal Bro Migo pessimism. <laughs> Good luck on the run, man, and rock on. This donation goes to Pessimism Choice. Thank you, homie. Much love. So now we're in a lovely room with a, a bald zombie who's a big jerk sometimes. Like, I guess we're going to see what he's going to do. Excuse me, sir. Oh, he didn't look fast <laughs> forward. Excuse me. Uh, Thank very you. Good, very good. Nice. Very well, nice. Yeah. The other zombie there um, on the way out, if you, can, uh, if you can see what direction he's moving, mm -hmm. then you can sometimes take a uh, shorter line on the way out. But, of course, because... Did he, did he take the short line or the long line? I, I took the really long looking. line. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, but because he couldn't see the zombie, it was more, yeah. more than likely that uh, the zombie was taking, was going to head him off at the shorter line off screen, so he took the longer line around. There's also an invisible enemy mode for this game, and in that room, you would want to try to like, sound where he's, at, where he's at. True, yeah. No, sound cues are very, very important in Resident Evil HD Remaster. Um, because with a lot of the camera angles, you can't actually see uh, what direction the zombies are moving, but you can sometimes hear them off screen, so you can sometimes hear, well, he's on the left side, he's on the right side. And if he was, uh, if he was like, kind of sort of airing toward the center, then kind of tell, like, what direction to take off screen. No, oh, why? Thank mm. you, sir. Well, yeah, no. sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, I forgot to mention, but this is 100%. 100% in this game is tracked by saving both characters. So for Jill, you would save Barry and Chris. For Chris, you save Jill and Rebecca. We're gonna let Miss Chambers get her practice on. Yeah, for this puzzle here, we have to, uh, unlike Jill, who can actually read music and play the piano, um, Chris can't, so he has to let Rebecca do all the playing and then go out to the main hall and then come back. So Chris gets to dodge that zombie an extra time. It's lovely. Consequently, that uh, that zombie there earlier um, was just one such example of like the pattern where he can't lunge. And as long as the hallway is wide enough, you know, you can just like barely create enough space in order to be able to move around him. But of course, it winds up becoming the slowest possible outcome. Thank you, RN Jesus. Let's see if he lunges. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. That's <laughs> exactly how it's supposed to look. <laughs> Some more donations, please. All right, we have $10 from Kid Dynamite. $10 donation <laughs> to my homie Pest. Much love, brother. Good looks. Yo, Paul, much love, dude. Cheers. Thank you. What uh -oh. am I doing? Uh-oh. I have autopiloted my friends. So you know what that means? It means we get to do this a third time. Let's go. It's okay. It's swag strats. We got oh, this. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, you need the, uh, you need the other emblem from the dining room in order to be able to, uh, in order to, be able to get, the, get the gold emblem. Correcto mundo. This is what we need. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> this, can we get another donation, please? Thank you. All right, we have $10 from Bashy Cake. Hey. The best <laughs> REHD remaster speedrunner of all time on show. Good luck on the reds, on the run. Best. Hope it's a smooth one, my lord. Yo, Shout out to everyone on the couch. Put the, this towards runner's choice. The smooth. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Appreciate it. So now, now we have the correct item. You can also do a little, a little trick that makes inventory slightly faster. You push like down on the analog and the D-pad and you skip 
a little slot in the inventory. If you if you mess it up, the, you will likely turn into the defense item a uh, little layout, and that, that's just not good. So uh, yeah. Yeah, basically it's like the way the way cursor works. Um, you can double up on inputs by hitting the analog stick and the D-pad at the same time. Because the stick is like a lever action, then the D-pad is like a switch action. If you like, if you like hit both at the same time, then the D-pad input will always register first. But immediately after, you get an extra down input from the left analog stick, so you can just instantly go into slot five, just like, just like that. Oh, I hit it slightly too early. It still worked. Oh yeah. So we we're going to get this lovely brownish key here. We're going to go see the first boss. He's the hardest boss in the game. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, really, I don't really like Pessimism's chances of getting past this. Do you guys? Uh, no. No, dude, Not it's really hard. I don't know, man. This is, this is probably like the riskiest thing in the game, so good luck. Thank you. I'm going to need it. <coughs> uh, a donation would be great. All right, we have $800 from JSP209. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> JSP says, thanks to Capcom for on this amazing HD remaster. Can't wait for the RE2 remake. Thank you for your donation. It's very kind of you. Cheers. And this is a very good game. Capcom did an amazing job remaking this game. A lot of people would say that this is the perfect example of how a remake should be done. The quintessential video game remake. So here we have Yon, the first boss. He's very difficult. Sorry. We're gonna we're gonna turn this way. We're gonna flip around, slide past him. There he is. Goodbye. It was bothering me. <laughs> <laughs> very good. That's actually that's actually a dodge that could be gotten like 100% of the time, but you know it's just like you you just like kind of kind of squeeze around the other way. Now we're on our way to the first true boss in the speed run. You still won't, don't want Yon to bite you though, because oh, yeah, poi no. poison. Yon has a very special kind of poison that uh, you cannot cure unless you go to the infirmary. You can't even cure it with a blue herb. You have to go to the infirmary no matter what. So. If he bites you, it's a run-ender. And that is, yes, a gigantic time loss. Remember the room? The room we're referring to is the room where we brought Rupture to at the bottom of that staircase. Right. Infirmary. Yep. Hit us with another donation. All right. We have $25 from Ultra Pulpo. The original version of this game gave my tween age brain nightmares for years. Love this series. Good luck on the run. I hope this isn't Chris's blood. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your donation. Thank you for your words. You probably get, you probably do a few more. This is a little just running around until we get to the area. Sure thing. We have $25 from Train. Both horror games and speedruns are great for keeping me awake while working so late. Thanks to Pessimism and all the other folks at the event for helping raise money for such an important cause. Hey, thank you. Thank you. We have $25 from Charles. How fortunate that my week off of work lined up with SGDQ. I'd be at work right now, but instead, I get to watch my favorite game being played by my favorite runner. <laughs> Here's the money that I would have used for gas on my weekly commute. Good luck, <laughs> Pessimism. Yo, thank you, Amen. homie. Much love. Thank you for your time. And your gas money. Yes. We have $10 from Grimoire. Excuse me, Grimoire. Thank you for putting the horror block so late that I won't get any sleep before work. This is the first uh -oh. of many future donations. I love what y'all are doing here, and I hope it never stops. Keep up the incredible work. Thank you for your donation. Yeah, so coming up here is uh, the first boss that is actually necessary to fight. The prototype Crimson Head. He is a lovely man. And by lovely man, we mean he doesn't cooperate very much. Yes. But uh, that's pretty much exactly why Pessimism grabbed the dagger. Um, the dagger costs about like 10 seconds to grab, but uh, 
It serves as a safety strat for at least one of his attacks, just like the uh, just like the grab. But it's also possible to bait out the grab, uh, stab him in the head with the dagger, and then finish him off with handgun bullets, which is probably the uh, safest strat that you're going to get for this fight as Chris. So here we want to try a thing called quick shooting. Now, in order to quick shoot, you must hit action on a specific frame. You're able to fire twice rapidly. You can do this up to three times if we can hit this. Oh. Oh, you guy. Wow, he didn't obey. There it there is. There it is. Catch that dagger. Yeah, if you stand at a certain angle behind. That was a little greedy. He's got like three more bullets, he's gonna die. The crimson head, not not pessimism. <laughs> you lunge, sir. Oh yeah, his recovery. Oh wow. I need you to take it down a notch. Yeah. No, those forward grabs actually have like uh, quite a quite a range to them. Oh man, he's got a lot of HP this time. Oh, there that's it. it. That's it. He is not dead, my friends. He is not dead. He's not dead. Oh, oh my god. Now he's dead. Now, now he's, he's dead. dead. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. That was that, that yeah. was that was that was a crimson head fight for the record. Books. What a guy. So <laughs> if you you know if you, when he falls, you can go to the thing and you'll see an exclamation. And that implies he's not dead. That's why I said that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, because the, yeah, the dialogue box popped up. Like normally, uh, normally when the crimson head dies, um, <laughs> you're supposed to be able like like the camera just pans over to the stone and metal object when you pick it up. But it just you know it says like 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 it says in Japanese. Japanese text saves like about like what 30 seconds of time throughout the course of the run. Yeah. But uh, it's a, but it but the it basically said uh, there's no time to check it now. So. Yeah. And this is the last zombie to stop us from. Oh, you're not gonna lunge. Well, that's very nice of you. Goodbye. Yeah, he was in seeking mode. <laughs> I actually think that if you go to the corner, he might be able to lunge through the corner. Have you tried that? It's possible, yeah. Okay. I wouldn't necessarily try that on us, though. So. Yeah, I don't know. I've, 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 I've tried it a couple oh, of times. It seemed to work. Really? So we're officially out of Mansion 1. That is good. Yep. Now we're uh, proceeding to the second half of the game. So here we have a little luck-based puzzle. The luck is how fast these things spin. So that was good luck. We got one more. They are not very cooperative weather vanes. The red weather vane is supposed to go towards the west side, and the blue weather vane is supposed was, to go towards the north pretty side. Good. But generally, they both need to be pointing towards the bottom right. And it just like solves the puzzle. And it's just oh, like my thumb slipped on the stick, and then I went 180. Oh, oh. this is a, a good time for some donations. All right, we have $500 for Major Jiglin. Oh. That's this beautiful man right here. Who? And he says, Who? good looks. Yo, good yeah. looks. Good looks. <laughs> good looks. Stop, stop. <laughs> It is that it, Major Jiglin is the beautiful man with the sunglasses. <laughs> Much love, dude. Much love. Good looks. Good looks. Good looks. <laughs> we have ten dollars from Cursed Toast. Hey, My brother has, so proud to see you run this at SGDQ this year. Keep up the good work. Also, shout out to the great people on the couch. Yo, Nate, thank you, dude. Much Cheers love. Cursed Toast. Cursed Toast is a very good friend in the community. He has written all of the auto splitters for this game. So thank you for your time to, to this game, my friend. Cheers. Thank you. So we're about to run into a lovely woman. A lovely woman. Run runners adore this woman. This is Lisa. You cannot kill her. And she hits like a tank. A woman of many faces. Do not get hit by her. She causes quite a lot of damage. Oh, yes. Fortunately for us, though, one step and run. Goodbye. <laughs> Basically, 
Yeah, that one step there is to just like sort of bait out the forward swing. Um, if you try to run immediately and you are lucky enough to be able to squeeze around her, but pretty sure Chris can't because his hitbox is too big, yeah. then Lisa will generally 180 and hit him. As is, as is typical with plenty of Capcom games, <laughs> yes. Lisa loves to read your button inputs. <laughs> She also acts differently because th this game is separated between the, the, there's the, the PC, there's PC door skip, and there's HD console, SD console. And the HD console is capped at 30 frames, whereas this version can run upwards to 120. So enemy behavior is a little different. You can get stuck on some enemies on the 120 that, you don't, that doesn't happen on 30. And uh, she is a little more tricky on the 30. Yeah, like aside from the uh, aside from aside from the AI reacting differently, um, the game also does more collision checks in those uh, in those number you know, whatever number of frames per second. So at 120 frames, you know you can you can do things like say for instance squeeze past one of the sharks in the uh, in the basement of the guardhouse, but uh, at uh, but at 120 you can't because you just get pushed you just get pushed out. We just ran past everyone's favorite Cerberus in this game, Torpedo, as I like to call him. I call him that because he launches himself <laughs> at uh, ridiculous lengths, and it's just not good. More donations, please. All right, we've got $5 from King of Knives. Hey, Pez, <laughs> Cynthia and I wish you the best of luck on your run tonight. Good luck. Yo, good <laughs> luck. Good luck. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Hope you guys are doing well. Much love. Some more, please. Sure thing. We have $500 from Jer Bear. It's $50 from Jonathan A. Barca. Huge hello and thank you to all of the runners for donating their time for such an amazing cause. I've been watching Games Done Quick for years and I look forward to each event. You all are amazing humans. Much love to Pessimism for the Resident Evil run. No, you mu the man. Much love to you. You the man. Thank you. So, uh, if you are not a fan of spiders, now might be a good mm -hmm. time to look away from the screen. Uh, <laughs> oh, you blew it. Yo, good looks. Good looks. It is possible to push a box over that, but that is slower. That thing does very minimal damage. You actually have to push a box specifically on like the corner of the screen, because otherwise the tentacle will just pop up through a different hole. But uh, still, yeah, it takes like an extra, what, 15 seconds. And on top of that, the time you spend climbing, just may as well just go ahead and shake off the tentacle. Like yeah. three, three seconds. Not a whole lot of damage. There's a lovely man in here with us. We will deal with you later, sir. <laughs> a donation, please. All right, we have $20 from DJ. Keep up the good work, mate. Hello from Sydney, Australia. Thank you, Vu, for your donation, homie. Thank you. We have $5 from Winter Light. <laughs> Staying up late in Salt Lake City to watch Pessimism play my favorite series of all time. Going to need some extra coffee for work tomorrow, but so worth it. <laughs> Thank you for watching the run. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> we have a $1,214.79 donation. Baby. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> from Fish Fox Nero with no comments. Thank you so much for that donation. Thank you so much for your generosity. Much love. Thank you. 
Man, these $1,000 donations, with no comment, they just like come and go like the wind. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Still good for some more? Yes, sir. All right. We have a $50 donation from Cabin Boy Copper. Long time watcher, first time donator. This event and the GDQ YouTube channel are some of my favorite things to watch. Keep up the great work. Thank you for your donation. So here right here is a cool little mini skit that was recently found. Do you want to come over here? Yep. Instead of pushing that first shelf, you can just do that, and it saves you a little bit of time. Yeah. The, uh, the collision box on that shelf kind of juts forward a little bit. And uh, at 120 FPS, I guess probably because of the, uh, of the extra collision checks, um, you're just able to sort of catch the corner of it a little, just like a little uh, earlier, I guess. And just like sort of push it to the right without having to push the other one. So right now, let's enjoy this beautiful piece of art along with some donations. No donations? It's, it's probably still loading. Oh, I apologize. Apologies. All right, we do have a $10 from Alder Smoke. Always love seeing this game at GDQ, and this run is no exception. Shout out to Para for being my horror buddy. Good luck on the run, Pessimism. Thank you, Fu, for your words and your donation. Thank you. We have a $50 donation from Captain Bus. Sleep got the best of me last night and caused me to miss the awesome NES block, but there's no way I'm missing Resident Evil. It's one of my favorite games, and I've been super excited about this run since it was accepted into the marathon. My first donation went to making Pest do this on Real Survivor, so he can choose what the money for, from this one goes towards. Thank you for your donation and your words. No flying sharks. We got it. What nice. you just saw is a pretty rare most of the time if you do the optimal ways cutting through the middle right there's the optimal way you get tagged so it's really nice to not get hit right there right about there is where you would wind up using your uh the first first aid spray but mm -hmm. pessimism is good enough that he only needs like one first aid spray throughout the entire run so so right here we have a little we we, we need everyone to get involved with this there are three valves we want you guys, Twitch chat, everyone in the back. What number are we getting? One, two, or three? I predict two. Three. I'm going to go with three. Oh. I heard, I heard a four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby. It's a one. Uh. Uh. <laughs> so whoever played one, you get a clap. <laughs> Good looks. Also, on hard difficulty, the, the percentage that you see goes up faster than it does on normal. Just like ever so slightly. But mm -hmm. if you know the if you know the solution to the puzzle, then it's like it's like pretty moot. It's gonna take the same amount of time no matter what. It's just like, you know, just a little extra fifty percent. Kind of had you worried for a second, huh? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, Mr. Redfield is finally going to get his weapon, which was mentioned before the assault shotgun. Yeah, there was a the the cutscene that he skipped because we saved Richard earlier. Um, Richard had an assault shotgun, and uh, Richard got eaten by this big lug over here. Yep. Yeah. You know, normally with this, uh, I mean, yeah, with this, with this shark, you know, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to push that thing oh. into the water, and then, uh, you know, wait, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Pessimism. What? Oh, oh it worked. My God. It worked. No way. <laughs> no way, dude. <laughs> I can't believe it worked. No, real talk, that's what you're, that's the optimal thing to do. Right. Yeah, basically, you, you could just drop down into the water and just, like, hold up and left and straighten out, and you just grab the key, 
It works 100% <laughs> of the time. Yes. Make sure you run, though. People who know what I'm talking about will laugh about that. Where's my son Leo at? <laughs> 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 so now uh, this fine gentleman up here is either going to grab us or he's not. Hopefully he's nice. It's a bit of a bit of a tough dodge to make. Yes. Significantly easier with Jill because of aforementioned uh, slimmer hitbox. And he also has a chance to double grab. So let's see what he does. Ooh, that was my fault. That was, my fault. that was my fault. I backed up into him too fast. Yeah, it was still a double grab. The double, yeah, the, the double grab. Basically, some sometimes zombies they like they like lunge, right? And then they can just like sort of cancel out of the lunge into like another lunge, just as quickly. Because they probably knew that like the AI, you know, if you can bait out a lunge, then <laughs> they'll probably they'll probably lunge again. The zombies, man, remake zombies are smart. They sure are. So now we got to exterminate some bees. These bees are 100% random. They can drop in two seconds. They can fly around for eight seconds. So let's see what happens. Yep. Good bees. Good, Good bees. bees. <laughs> let's see it. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, uh, no, nice. that was decent. It's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. So it has to be like, what, three bees, I think, have to die on that screen before it uh, transfers back to Chris. We are approaching the second boss. Double O three key. That key unlocks that door. It sure does. So we have a little uh, book puzzle right here, which takes all about 15, 20 seconds. Equip your shotgun before going in so you don't have to do a force menu. Oh. And here we are about to face Plant 42. Plant 42 is the true wombo combo king. You will learn this if you do knife on this game. So you want to come up here. Position up. Oh, that's unlucky. Generally speaking, three shots will trigger it to close. In the meantime, reload your weapon. Sometimes if you're lucky, you can squeeze in a fourth shot, but after six shots, this mini cutscene over here happens, signifying the halfway point. Yeah. You sneak in a second shot, or another shot right there, excuse me. <laughs> ah, we got really unlucky with these openings. We want to go down here. It's getting pretty low on HP, so now we want to get closer to the key. As soon as you hit that cut, camera change, aim up. Oh, we got unlucky right there, damn. Dead. There you go. There we go. It's a really good plant 42. But generally, yeah, you want to end the fight as close as you can to the key. So, you know, when he dies and you're allowed to pick up the key, you're right next to the key. If you get uh, smacked up in that fight, you can always go in this room right there, and the Miss Chambers, Rebecca, will give you a full heal at the cost of about 20, 25 seconds. That's Mr. Wesker, Mr. Albert Wesker, saying whatever he's saying. Yeah, Wesker doesn't really get a whole lot of face time in the speed run. No. Uh, we can get some donations in. All right, we have a $25 donation from Daltagnum. The only thing more metal than your shirt pessimism is your insane Resident Evil skills. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing, and massive thanks to everyone involved. Thank you for your words. Much love. Thank you. We have $25 from Wazaki. 
What an amazing event. Thanks to Pessimism for the high-level play and the high-level gratitude to each donation. Thank you for your time. Much love. So right here, there's this is a, it's a little scary dodge. For real survival specifically, because if you get hit by one of these snakes, you get poisoned, potentially poisoned, and there's no blue herb since this is hard mode. Thank you. Great. There okay. you good, go. Good line. Good line. <laughs> yeah, the snakes have a uh, roughly 50% chance to poison if they bite you. Um, and sometimes, you know, it's like, it's like even if you take the correct line, sometimes there's a chance that, you know, just like, you're just like, just a hair to the left or a hair to the right, you know, the snake's going to wind up biting you. And uh, in normal, there's a blue herb in this room, but, uh, like in this room going past the dogs, but uh, that herb is not present. So the next uh, time you would get a blue herb would be in the basement of the mansion coming up. And you must run past a very dangerous part in the run with a tummy ache. And when I say tummy ache, I'm referring to caution. Well, if they're poisoned, they also act as if they're, they hold their bodies like they're in caution and then you run slower. Right. And that is this lovely room with two hunters. Hunters are very dangerous. They can stomach you. They can one-shot you. They're just not very nice. Let's see, let's see if they play nice. Thank you, sir. Okay, good. Yeah, he was going for the instant kill there. And so you, you went away right there as soon as he jumped up? Nice. Yeah, that's good. Once you get up, once you get up there, the, they're, like a, they're like AIs interfere with each other. So the, so the hunter up top backs up, and that allows you to run past him. Yeah, basically it's set up so that uh, the hunters can't clip into each other or anything like that because they have a lot of they have like a lot of weird zone control attacks, I guess. And I suppose if they didn't make it so that the, so that like the hunter's AI decides to like turn off or like back up whenever another hunter is like coming in behind or something like that, then they'd probably clip into each other. But many many runs have died in that room as well. Also, Lord Spencer must be obscenely rich to have those two particular paintings on that crusher right there. <laughs> the beheading of Holofernes and the binding of Isaac. <clears throat> so, once again, if you do not like spiders, now might be a good time to look away. Well, I'll take that maybe like 20 seconds to look away. Sorry. Can we get another donation in real quick? Oh, sure. We yeah, got yeah, yeah. the Noble one with $25. I've never seen this runner or this game, but this is already my favorite GDQ run. The movement <laughs> is crazy, the game is beautiful, and Pessimism may be the best runner I've seen at a GDQ. Despite his name, he's so kind, warm, and hilarious. Good looks, whatever that means. Yo. Have a great run. This donation goes to your choice, dude. Yo, good looks. Thank you for your words. I appreciate it. Much love. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Oh, we went for the poison. Get out of my way. Thank you, though. Much love. So now this is, uh, we got some more zombie friends to get past. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, the positioning on that one was a little ambiguous, but. This guy's off the screen. That's lovely. Goodbye. <laughs> he just like sort of had to confirm that he could like squeeze to the right there. Al alternate controls with camera changes, they do not mix. So it's a little difficult sometimes. Excuse me, thank you. Yeah, that's the thing about uh, fixed camera angles on some games is uh, if you're holding a direction and uh, you know you accidentally register like an extra input or something, then sometimes you just like wind up turning in exactly the direction that you do not intend to do. That one over there, you know, just kind of, just kind of. Yeah, just, just, you know, just hug the wall a little bit. Hug the wall. He'll miss you. <laughs> We're gonna pick up some more shotgun shells. And the battery. Now this is, we're going into Murder Hall 3. This is the last time we go in this room. Well, the last time that really has a threat. It's not just any Murder Hall. It is the Reverse Murder Hall. Reverse. So let's see how these guys play. 
Excuse me, sir. That was insane. Baldy's not in the. Oh, he is here. Yeah, what are he you is. doing here, sir? Sir. Oh, this is. Oh, wow. Nice. That was good. <laughs> Yeah, the bald-headed one. Um, sometimes he uh, likes to head off the player like that, and you have to kind of mm -hmm. do like an extra bait out. But of course, but the uh, crimson head behind him generally doesn't activate until you hit the camera angle that he's on. Yeah. So whenever he does, whenever he, whenever he does activate, you just like sort of bait out, splash, and get back up. I'm sure you guys remember this lovely specimen. But this time we actually have to fight Yon, so we will do that. He takes eight shotgun shells. He takes five grenades for Jill. He takes five grenades, four acid grenades. Yeah, that's uh, one thing that Chris cannot do that Jill can is uh, pump cancel with the shotgun on bosses. Um, pump canceling only works for like Chris in like one instance of the run, but mm -hmm. if you uh, basically if you fire your gun. Or you fire the shotgun and you release R1 and press up before Chris cocks the shotgun, then uh, you're able to completely cancel that and you can lower and re-raise the gun and uh, you're actually able to fire the shotgun much faster. But because Chris, against bosses, raises a shotgun to his shoulder um, and the pump canceling requires hip fire, Chris cannot do it during boss fights. That is correct. Can we get some more donations, please? Sure thing. We have $5 from Jerf. Staying up way too late to watch one of my favorite games being played by an amazing speedrunner. Shout out to Carsey on the couch. So Thank you for your words and your donation. And we have $25 from Jazz. Hey, Pessimism, good luck on the run. Thank you, homie. So right here is another example of why Chris's route is longer. Jill can simply go in that room. But Chris, he needs to drop some items off. Oh, I got caught on the thing. Woo. So we're, we're, we're going to do that right now. We're going to drop off these two books, and then we're going to go in that room. There's a fast in there. If for whatever reason you're hurt badly, get yourself out of caution. Uh, more donations, please. If they're any. Oh, sure. $10 Thank from you. Cherry Moon. First time watching Pessimism speedrunning, and he's quickly becoming my favorite runner just for his attitude. Huge respect and good luck with the rest of your run. Thank you for your words. Thank you for your time. Much love. We have $25 from Rye. This is so chill. A plus love from a late night watcher. Thank you for your time and donation. So for any percent, you do not have to grab the yellow gem, but 100% requires you to gather three Mo discs, and the yellow gem allows you to get one of them, so it's required. And Jill, for instance, would go downstairs to get the Mo disc now, but since they're, the item boxes are not linked, and that is the optimal place to drop off the books, we will come back for it and get the Mo disc at the same time. And that hunter is just there to look scary. Run past them and you're all good. Yeah, pretty much every time a hunter... I mean, it's very rare that a hunter will attack immediately, but most of the time, hunters, you know, it's like whenever they see you, they just, they just like stand there and shriek like an idiot, and you're just <laughs> able to run around them. But they also run faster than you, so they can kind of catch up to you. So <laughs> whatever you're going to do, do it fast. You want to take this a little tight? Nope, didn't get it. At least he didn't lunge. Goodbye. You can slide past him right there real quick. Now we were on our way to drop off the battery, so it's a perfect time for some donations. All right, we have a $200 donation from the Pokemon dude. Mm, I've always nice. wanted to donate during one of these events. Many thanks to the runner and SGDQ for donating for this great cause. Much love, donation to your choice. Much love, thank you for your donation. And Pokemon is awesome. I'm a big Pokemon fan myself. So good looks. Okay. 
What's your favorite Pokemon, Pessimism? My favorite Pokemon is Raichu, no doubt. Good choice. Who's yours, Carsey? Um, I'm more of a Typhlosion guy myself. Typhlosion is very good. I am a fan. We have $50 from Alexander the Art. I'll do it fine. I'll donate another fifty dollars because I stayed up all night so I could have my comment read while pessimism kills one of my favorite games of all time. Now it's almost four a.m. and I'm hungry. I think I'll pop into the kitchen and make a Jill sandwich. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> Thank you for your time and donation. Much love. So now we get to run past Torpedo and his friends again, and Torpedo's gonna play nice. There's a slim chance that he's gonna be walking in this direction that I'm running. And if that is the case, there's a chance he's going to lunge at you. It's very uncommon, though. And we get to run past these beautiful snakes again. But this line is also much easier. Much easier, much safer. So there'll be a hole left on the alt stick. Position up a little bit. Goodbye. They changed the AI of the uh, dogs in HD Remaster versus the uh, remake just a little bit. Um, normally, the dogs uh, attack pretty much instantly, but they added an extra cycle in remake where the dogs just like growl for a little bit before they actually do chase you. In which case, you can actually see like what direction. That one just barked like an idiot. <laughs> But uh, yeah, usually you can see like what direction they're facing before they're about to turn and run. Mm. Yeah, what a time, guy. That time he didn't growl, and that completely contradicts exactly what I just said. <laughs> yeah, 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 every now and then that happens. It's not most of the time, it's like Harsh said, they growl and they do their thing. Very rarely does that happen. It's all good. The, the dogs generally do very little damage, though. And like getting them jumping at you like that is minimal time loss. Like if they grab your arm though, then that's that's the big no no. So now uh, we're gonna go back down the elevator we just came from. How lovely. Hopefully they'll be a little kinder to you on the way back. Yes. Look at this guy. All right. Look at this guy. <laughs> Get out of the way. Thank you. All right, this one is pretty safe as well. It's, sometimes he just runs instantly. That's the optimal thing. Let's see what he does. No, he does not. He stands there for two seconds. Goodbye. That dog is actually significantly more annoying in the GameCube version. Um, I actually had one pull me through that column that he just ran by. It was quite the frustrating experience. Yeah, generally speaking, those dogs don't, like, as soon as you get in, like, the hall thing, like, they don't come after you. They, they go off and do what they're, they do. So all right now we're about to go see another member of STARS. And he's going to tell us about a traitor. But uh, we are not going to listen because we're going to skip the cutscene. Yeah. <laughs> Is that voice Enrico's? Yeah. <laughs> that's how that, that that's how they sound in OG Ari. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't come any closer, Chris. <laughs> Wait, what happened? <laughs> yeah, for those who don't know the original Resident Evil, voice acting is legendary in that game. You should look up some YouTube clips. Calm down, sir. All right, now we're about to do a lovely puzzle that is can be very annoying and cause you lots of time loss. Hopefully, this is gonna be clean. You know, the first time I saw this puzzle, I actually actually kind of liked it. I thought it was pretty neat. Pretty good. Nice. No box. No box. <clears throat> I 
in this, in this next room, we must, uh, there, there's, there's a big boulder like Indiana Jones, and we must run away from it. So you, tr you trigger the, the, well, first we're going to grab the broken, or the, excuse me, the regular thing thrower. We're going to come over here and see that light spot right there? Turn, triggers. You do not need to go all the way to it. Don't actually need to hit that camera angle. Nice. And right now we're going to pay a visit to everyone's favorite arachnid. So if you don't like spiders, don't look, because this is a big one. Miss, uh, Miss Black Tiger over here. Uh, Hold uh, upright uh, on your alt stick. The quick poison. That's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Goodbye. Very nice. Yes. But uh, Black Tiger has three things she will do right there. She will do what she just did, which is you don't want that. She'll do a, a charge poison, or she'll immediately go for a German suplex, as I like to call it. And you want the German suplex. That's like the uh, that's like the actual charge charge, where she like sort of slowly walks up and like goes after you. Is that is that what you mean by German suplex? Yeah, it's by no means an actual German suplex. I just like to say that. But yes, that that, that is the one. Yeah. It's also worth noting that uh, Black Tiger generally takes like three seconds between actions. And uh, sometimes one of its actions can be like one where it lifts its, lifts its like front legs and like sort of looks around a little bit and goes down and it basically just wastes an action. There's another Indiana Jones boulder as you can see. Now we're going to do another simple puzzle. Uh, now would be a good time for some more donations. All right, we have $5 from Computer Cursor. Just want to say hi from the right side of the screen. Best seat in the house. I'll be here all night. <laughs> thank, you, com thank you, Computer Cursor, for your donation. <laughs> thank you. I, like, legitimately couldn't get this thing off. Let's see. See, it goes back. Stay try, where you are. Try moving it. Try moving it down. Like, all the way down. Oh, we got it. Hey, we got it. <laughs> I did not do the spin either. Another clap. Yay. <laughs> My sincerest apologies, computer cursor, but down in front. <laughs> <laughs> we also have $10 from Kaiju. You're so polite to the zombies. It's sweet. Thanks for doing what you do. Thank you for your time and your donation. It is appreciated. Good looks. Good looks. Good looks. Yeah, so, sometimes you got to sweet talk the zombies, you know? They're used to getting blasted with shotguns and grenade launchers, pistols. Sometimes you got to sweet talk them and they'll be nice. Yeah, you, know, you just got to just gotta think of things from the zombie's perspective. So now we're going to go run past Black Tiger and she has four things she's going to do. Quick poison, charge poison, go for a German suplex, or immediately charge. Let's see what she does. Or she does the fifth one that is like almost never happens. Thank you. Well, that was really lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Now we're going to drop off these two cranks for inventory space. At this point, both of those are completely useless. They will never be used again. They will not. We can get some more donations, please. All right, we have five dollars from Ricks. Been watching for years, but this is my first time being able to donate. I am super excited to donate during Pessimism's wonderful run. Much love. Much love to you. Thank you. We have fifty dollars from Eshwin. Pessimism's positive vibes are as infectious as the T virus. Keep <laughs> spreading the love. Thank you for your donation and your time. Oh, kind of messed that up. So a quick little tip: whenever you you hit, you go to combine. Say your your the items in the the five spot that you're trying to combine to the fourth. You simply just push left, and it'll automatically do it instead of going upright. It's only when you highlight the combine option. Yeah. Because if you press left otherwise, then it will try to shift to the left into the defense item menu. Also speaking on that, you want to combine 
the the last item and because then it'll stay on the last thing you combine see whereas you go so you go left to right it's going to bring you back to the other side so right you want to take a little that might be too wide no we're good bye bye as you can see we're back with miss trevor the lovely woman that we saw i don't know 30 minutes ago and and, and she's back to get us and this game has a very silly thing right here where this box will be on this carrier but it'll say that it's not. And it can do it like five times, and obviously it's a time loss. So let's see if it does it. It does not, thank you, game. <laughs> I think it has more to do with Chris's position, because it's like whenever you push, whenever you push like five times, you have to like kind of shuffle Chris's position around a little bit before you hit that switch. Otherwise, yeah, it gives the, uh, what? And so right here is a prime example. Well, it's a common example of getting caught on Miss Trevor that we were spoke about earlier with uh, getting caught on stuff. Oh, we got through that time. Thank you. Goodbye. It's honestly a lot more common with Jill. Christopher, uh, there's just something about him. She just can't hit him. Just can't do it. Uh, more donations, please. All right, we got $25 from Ken. Thank you, Pessimism, for running one of the best games of all time. Keep up the awesome work. Shoutouts to Carsey for his helpful tutorials on how to run this game. You guys are great. Much love. Thank you for your time. We have $50 from Sneaky Dumpling. First time I've been able to watch GDQ. So happy to be watching these awesome gamers. It's even better knowing that it's for a good cause. You guys rock. Much love. You rock. So we're going to pick, oh, please. We have $10 for Mr. Silent Vid. This has to be the best Resident Evil game. So glad I could watch this live. Good luck on the run. Thank you. We're going to pick up a broken flamethrower. And we're going to leave. More donations, please. All right, we have $15 from Dijon Ketchup. As a kid, I played through the original Resident Evil on the Sega Saturn. Back then, I couldn't imagine this game looking this good or being beaten this fast. What an age we live in. Thank you. <laughs> we have $15 from Tyrannosaur. Shout out to GDQ, everyone speedrunning, and everyone on the couch. MSF is a group of amazing people, and here's my contribution to make sure they continue to change people's lives around the world for the better. Thank you all. Thank you for your contribution. So, Pessimism, I have, a, I have a question for you. About, yes, sir. About Lisa, like, whenever you go to hit the lever, um, at 120 FPS, does she always lunge forward like that? Pretty consistent. There's a chance that she's going to go do the back 180, but that's not real common. Okay. Yeah, it's just that every time I've tried to go for that, like, I always, uh, I always go for, um, I just, like, go for the switch immediately, but okay. mm -hmm. it's, like, it's, like, with that in mind, you know, she probably, like, just go ahead and not worry about like time loss from like the lunge or anything like that. All right. I just like wasn't sure if I was like losing time from that or not. Yeah, no. So we're back in the cabin. You guys remember this place, right? Chris got knocked out right there. And this is going to be a nice little stroll back to the mansion so we can get some more donations. All right, we have $10 from Blazing Flare, and it says, here's $10 to announcer's choice for having a super superb choice for a favorite Pokemon, Typhlosion for life. And I actually forgot who had the choice of Typhlosion. Mr. Carcinogen Mr. did. Mr. Carcinogen, yeah. there you go. So, to your choice. To my choice, uh, Fighter Mode in Castlevania Circle of the Moon. Good deal. And we have $50 from Keeper's Diary for... Itchy, tasty. <laughs> <laughs> we have a $30 donation from Studious Sleeper with no comment. Thank you. Thank you for your donations. Much love. Here we're going to pick up our shotgun shells that uh, we, we've been saving.
Each shotgun shell cases you can see carry six. The grenades carry six. Hanging bolts carry 15. We need this item. And we are in the mansion for the very last time. We're gonna run past our hunter friend here. Basically every time you come in through this room where there's the hunter, you know, you just kinda, he's always like in a place where you can go exactly to the place that you need to go in the speed run. It's kind of a weird coincidence. No, that cutscene I just skipped is Rebecca calling for help because there's a scary monster trying to get her. So we're going to go save her. Yep. Consequently, this means got to go through this hunter room one more time. Goodbye. Yeah. I was just, it's, it's, good, it's good. Good thing your stair skating is on point because he would have, he, he could have, he could have blocked. He was like, he was like in prime position for blocking. Excuse me, sir. Yes, generally speaking, stair skating isn't super important, but that part, it is important. Goodbye. I see that, that, that right there was a one point where pump canceling is effective right there. Now we're going to run past this room with three scary zombies that are going to try to eat us. But we're not going to give them that opportunity. Sometimes RNG permitting that third zombie does not bust out of the door here from after yawn. Like that zombie busted out of the door after yawn earlier. It's about like a 75% chance that zombie's going to bust out of the door. But sometimes you get lucky and he doesn't. And you know, you can save a couple of extra seconds. Yeah, generally speaking, that guy is doesn't affect, but like for example, on a rocket launcher category, he can. So because we're playing real survival mode, um, we now have to go back to get the, uh, the, do the two Doom books with the Eagle Medal and the Wolf Medal. And uh, Pessimism left them in the chest on the west side of the mansion. And uh, in the process, gonna also grab the Mo Disc from the Tiger statue. I also do this so there's gonna be a zombie at the end of this hall where if you don't reset the room, there's a chance he's gonna grab you. So it just happens to work out that I come in here, get this, this item, and the room resets. So the chances of getting grabbed are drastically decreased. Oh, and for most Resident, a lot of the older Resident Evil games, you can, you know, put the enemies back in the original spot by re-entering the room. One exception is, of course, RE0. Resident Evil 0 it's insanely difficult to practice zombies in that game. Yes. Just like for pretty much exactly that reason, because Enemy positions do not reset. Not unless the enemy happens. Ooh. I reset the room and he grabs me anyways. What a guy. Goodbye. Yeah, he was moving pretty fast that time. Yeah, it's all good. We're just going to grab the fast in that chest. Goodbye. Yeah, this was another reason why he uh, left immediately after grabbing the two jewels earlier. Because if he went downstairs to go grab the Modisk on his way back over here, then he would have had to dodge those two hunters uh, like an extra time. And uh, especially coming through downstairs area, if those hunters are there, then there's a very, very high chance you're going to get decapitated. The hunter ain't got nothing for me. <laughs> Go away. You too. Some more donations, please. Sure thing. We got $25 from Beast Race. I'll donate for my fellow death metal fan, Pessimism. Keep up the good work, bro. Oh, and kill the animals. Much love, homie. Thank you. Should also be noted that uh, Pessimism is a death metal vocalist. I am. 
if you're into that kind of music, I play in a band called Genethliac. Scope it. I appreciate anyone's time who checks it out. Whether you like it or not, I just appreciate your time. Thank you. We have $15 from Wazaki. Had to donate again. We need more people like pessimism in the world. Much love for Doctors Without Borders and everyone else. Much love to you, my friend. Thank you. We are about to encounter Miss Trevor for the very last time, which is a good thing. And hopefully she's gonna come over here and knock Albert Wesker off. That is the plan. Knock him off. She can do a variety of things right here. And she's not going to jump. How unfortunate. Oh, thank you. I was just about to risk it and run right past her. Yeah. Come so over here. Uh, oh. No. Uh -oh. No, we're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. okay. Just walking there forward. Go. There we go. Nice. That room. That room can be very dangerous. She could. Just, you could be pushing the one I just pushed and just come over and smack you. And she could do. She could kill you right there if you if you get real greedy and try to push it off. She also can knock you right off the thing. That, that's just awful. I actually have a safety save for that spot in case something bad would happen in this run. Yeah, like uh, normally the optimal pattern for that room is to push all of those stones in like a reverse, in like a reverse crescent sort of pattern. Um, and uh, the only way that can actually really happen is if Lisa's action is being eaten up by a jump over the uh, over the sarcophagus, and uh, also if like she goes over to attack Wesker, like if Wesker fully draws her aggro and she like decides to knock him off, that could also be another permutation in which you actually are able to move in that reverse pattern. But when she's stuck back there like that, pessimism had to push the far statue first, or the far stone first, and then the other stone in the top right of the room second, because that one always takes three pushes to do. So it's easily the most dangerous one in the room to push. She can knock you off and kill you easily. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the final part of the game. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. There's only two zombies in this room on, uh, on that way in for, uh, or two zombies that are in your path, rather, for normal. We want to come over here. We want to decap this man. And that is that. The, the computer passwords are different from the original Resident Evil, or it's, I don't even, I think it's Mole. Yeah, Mole in the first game. And right here it's John, Ada, and then Cell. Oh, I froze a little bit right there. I should also mention uh, there's a, uh, each weapon has a different decapitation rate. Um, weapons in Resident Evil HD Remaster do not decapitate with the same, um, like with the same consistency that they do in the previous games. Probably because they wanted the players to encounter Crimson Heads more. Crimson Heads, zombies turn into Crimson Heads if you kill them, and you don't either decapitate them or burn the body. And after like you know a certain number of event flags have passed, then they'll come back as Crimson Heads. Um, but the assault shotgun has a 70% decapitation rate. The pistol has a 10% decapitation rate. Regular shotgun, 60%. Magnum is nine out of 10. So it's like good things to know. As you see, we're getting these Mo discs real quick. Let me get some more donations in right here. Sure thing. We have ten dollars from Setharoff. Thank you for donating your time, so we can uh, so we can donate to a great cause. Keep your awesome run going, pessimism. Thank you for your donation and your words. Much love. We have ten dollars from Fox Reels. Pessimism. <laughs> thanks to this legendary run of the greatest remake of all time. Much love. Much love to you. Thank you. We have twenty dollars from Aslandir. Can't believe I made it off in time to catch this. Awesome job on the run. Also, what up, Darcy? Hey, how's it going, Aslander? Thank you for your time. 
Alright, we're gonna get right in the zombie's face. Oh, he didn't lunge. I've never seen that before. Yep. Anytime I've done that line, he lunges. So you guys you get to see a rarity, I guess. That one seems to generally always lunge. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, even if even though he lunges, he never really moves fast either, so... Um, you just always dodge in front of him and just, like, never get grabbed. But you can pretty much only do that dodge on, like, that particular pass. <coughs> so here's where uh, we insert these Mo discs. They're not GameCubes in this game, in this version, are, are they? No, they... Uh, yeah, the, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. In, 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 the original, uh, in the original remake, uh, because the first two consoles the game was released on was the uh, GameCube and the Wii, um, the MoDisc consoles were significantly more GameCube-shaped. I think Nintendo had some funding in Resident Evil Remake. I'm not 100% sure. So here I'm going to do the safety strap because... In the, this run, there's a, the nitrogen run, and on hard mode, it is your steps are very limited, and you must take this nitrogen where your steps are limited through a very random enemy. So I'm going to kill him to ensure that I do not die, because it is pretty tricky. Have time for some more donations? Absolutely. All right, we got $15 from Log Cabin. Hey, mates, much love. UPS, how does pessimism spell his name? Much love to you. What's the question? How do you spell your band name? G-E-N-E-T-H-L-I-A-C. You Thank you for your interest. That. I appreciate your time, like I said. Thank you. So yeah, that, that's, that's the enemy right there, Mr. Chimera, Mr. Troll. Um, more donations, please. Sure thing. We have $100 from Magic Shogun. Much love from New Zealand. Enjoying this run so much. Kill the animals and good luck. Yo, good, <laughs> good looks. looks. Thank you. Much love. We have $5 from Karen. Giant killer snakes, sharks, and spiders. I never <laughs> knew the original Resident Evil was set here in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> They may be deadly, but save those animals anyway. Excuse me, sir. You need to come back over here. Over here. Goodbye. <laughs> ah. So that, that, that's a little trick. If he ever 180s back over there, just run right behind him. Basically, he needs to be facing the other way in order for the optimal dodge to happen in here. Over here, uh, pessimism is picking up the nitro canister. Yes. On normal, you can clear this room without stopping, but that is not the case. What is that? Go through the door. Thank you. A lab coat, That's apparently. a cool lab coat. <laughs> <laughs> I like that lab coat. Yeah, so... Oh, okay, I've asked a uh, little quiet, please. I need to count my steps. Thank you. Right. So, over here, basically, um, you can't be moving very fast. Or he can't be moving, running all the time. So you can okay. run. You can run a few steps, just like not a bunch. On, for example, New Game Plus, you can do two ten. On normal any percent, you could do two five. On hard, I do two two. Uh, I think it can be optimized a little more. I, I just need to put some time into doing it. Okay, we're, All right, good. we're good. All right. Basically, if he uh, runs too many steps, then you get a nice little explosion animation, and uh, you take out the lab with you and Chris. Yep. Or if you shoot a weapon as well. You run, you take... You, so if you run, if you get hit, or you shoot a weapon, it can explode. <laughs> Not a good way to end the game. I also have a, wait, I already said that, never mind. Oh, we can uh, have some more donations, please. Sure thing, we have $25 from Silver Moon. Keep up the good work and good luck on the runs. 
Thank you. Much love. We have $10 from Gabe. Glad to help a good cause and watch the good runners. <laughs> Much love. So we're doing a nice little stroll to Mr. Tyrant. It should be noted that uh, the chimeras in here always move in the same pattern every time, so don't gotta worry about getting hit by them. The only thing that you had to worry about was, uh, the only thing that Pessimism had to worry about was the one that was sitting next to the Nitro Canister, so he cleared that one out a little early so that it wouldn't, uh, so they wouldn't get hit by it on accident and potentially lose the run. Right there, you get a little cutscene with Rebecca. The, as long as you are close enough, the tyrant takes seven shotgun shells. Or you can, for Jill, you can just get Barry's Magnum and one-shot them. But we don't have that luxury, so we're, we're gonna shoot him seven times. Get out of the menu, thank you. As can be expected, the shotgun has a bit of a damage drop off. So sometimes, if you like, go too far down the line, it could take like eight or nine shots. Chris! Chris! <laughs> <laughs> so right now, we, well not right now, maybe like 30 seconds, we're gonna hear a very fine tune. The uh, escape tune is very nice in this game. I think the, in my personal opinion, Resident Evil 2 is the only one that is close to it. Hopefully you guys enjoy it as well. You, so if you do any percent, you do not get, you, you don't get this tune. It's just, it's, a, it's pretty boring actually. You just go up to the top and you run, you win. Rebecca has to be alive to initiate the self-destruct system for this, uh, for this sequence to happen. And Barry must be alive if you're playing Jill. Absolutely. All right. We got $10 from Dunman. Great run so far. This is easily my favorite remake of a game ever. Keep up the good work, Pessimism. Thank you. Much love. We have an anonymous $100 donation. Can't forget to donate during GDQ. Thank you for your donation. Much love. Right here, we're going to save Miss Valentine. You get to see for half a second. There's a chance that she will glitch down here. Chris does it pretty much every time. Let's see, let's see what she does. Nope, she's coming. Uh, more donations, please. <laughs> oh, sure. We got $10 from Frog Hop. It is late at night, and I can't donate much, but here's $10 for giving me something entertaining to watch at this late hour. Doctors Without Borders is a great cause. Carsey's gonna hate me for this, but forget the frames, save the animals. Perfectly okay with that. Cheers, Frog Hop. Thank you. So we got good luck with this guy. Sometimes this guy will be right in the middle, he'll flip around and be right in your way. It's good luck too. Goodbye. Last two zombies in the entire game. Coming up on the final boss in just a minute. We got Mr. Mr. Brad Vickers over here with a rocket launcher in his helicopter. Who, those who know, die in Resident Evil, who dies in Resident Evil 3. And now we have one last elevator ride and it is super tyrant time. 
You must treat this fight differently with Chris than you do with Jill. Generally speaking, this fight is harder with Chris because Jill can get Tyrant kind of stuck where she can just unload on him with grenade shots. Chris doesn't have that luxury. So we're going to equip the shotgun. Shoot. Grab her slash. Get your get your 10 shots off. If it, sometimes he'll merely charge at you. But you go away. He's making this difficult. Thank you. It's about to charge. Okay, goodbye. Hello, where'd you go? Hello? <laughs> Why are you there? Oh, wow. <laughs> Get away from me. Oh, boy. Pick up, but you pick up the rocket launchers? Thank you, sir. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh -oh. uh, where is this man going? Ooh. Oh, jeez. Destroyed. You want to go to the opposite side, as you can see. I miss. He grabbed me. Uh oh. Can you get out? Oh yeah, I'm out. Oh, okay, all right. You, you you will die now, sir. Goodbye. <laughs> that that, that was seriously a very random super tyrant fight. I cannot and believe that. And time. What a man. Great job, dude. <laughs> Great job. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. 130, 32. Thank you, I appreciate it. Real quick, so Resident Evil times are generally tracked by the IGT. There might be a few, like the newer ones that are tracked RT, I'm not 100% sure. But uh, yeah, that was Chris Brooks Rival 100%. I want to thank GDQ for setting this event up and giving me the opportunity to come run this game. I've been running this game for a long time. This has been my main speed game, so I'm very happy I was given the opportunity to come here and run it for you guys. Thank you to my homies on the couch, much love. And thank you to everyone for watching. I really do appreciate your time. It means a lot. Much love. Thank you. Good if you luck. like this run, twitch.tv slash pessimism. Pessimism. P-E-S-S-I-M-S-I-M. -S 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 it's on the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Much love. Thank you, guys. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of GDQ. Much love. Thank you. Thank you so much for that awesome run, pessimism. And we will be back after a brief ad from Twitch. And we are back with Summer Games Done Quick, benefiting Doctors Without Borders.
we have $25 from Jimmy Franks. Toast, here's a donation. It might come in handy if you, the master of reading donations, take it with you. Great work, everyone. Rock on. Thank you, Jimmy. Appreciate it. We have $25 from Phil. Hey, Toast, keep on keeping on. Say hi to Anna. I will. Thank you so much, Phil. We have $25 from Rick Astley. Shout out to the runners for never giving up and never letting us down. Hey, I see what you did there. Thanks for the $25. We have $10 from Smooth Operative, having a blast watching SDDQ this year. Shout outs to the volunteers for all their hard work. And of course, lots of love for my boy, Maxie. Wishing you a speedy and successful fear run. Maxie, woo. I assume that's how you read that. All right, we have a whole slew of donations here with no comments. Thank you to everyone for this. We have $25 from I Can't Dance, no comment. A $50 anonymous donation, one from Lord Byron for $40. We have an anonymous $250 donation, an anonymous $150 donation. And from Wintermute 2.0, we have $50. We also have $50 from Tiff and $50 from Geldeen. Thank you so much, everyone. We have $20 from Frenzy. Great runs for a great cause. Keep up the good work. Greetings from Germany. And we have $5 from Anonymous. First time GDQ watcher. As a video game test analyst, I can say watching these runners break all of the things is really entertaining. Thanks to all for making this happen and happy to be a part of it.
All right, just to let everybody know, the Simpsons hit and run, choose the language incentive is neck and neck. With German at $3,531.99, with French very close behind at $3,423.06. So if you've got a horse in that race, if you've got one that you want to go with, definitely get those donations in before that run starts, because that is neck and neck. We have $15 from Jazzy Jazz, an awesome run of Resident Evil Remake. Thanks for putting on a great show to all the runners this year and every year. Much love from the UK. We have $25 from Oyster. Shout outs to my homie French Toast on the mic. Your enthusiasm at the wee hours is admirable. Well, thank you very, very much. All right, we are ready for the Fear Run with Maxi Lobes. Take it away. <laughs> 